Orioles in the lead. I'm Mario and Pemba along with Rex Hutler. We'd like to welcome those who are watching the Yankees and Boston Red Sox. On uh, baseball Thursday, the Yankees beating the Boston Red Sox. Boston Red Sox beating the Yankees. I'm sorry, 4-2. to two. Here it is, 2-0. Casey in the lead. Back with more. Now for the Angels Lexus lineup tonight. This is how Mike Sosha will send out his nine this evening. Erstad leads it off in center field. Orlando Palmero getting the start in left batting second. Obon will hit third at first base, followed by Tim Salmon, the cleanup hitter in right. Garrett Anderson, the designated hitter. Troy Gloss at third base. Benji Molina will catch Adam Kennedy batting eight and playing second base. And what a month of June he has had. And Benji Gill, the shortstop, is batting nine. Jay Wittasek, the right-hander on the mound for the Kansas City Royals. Wittasek, he's a right-hander, and he throws hard. He's got some power, but he's had trouble locating that pitch. You've got to be able to spot the corners, or you'll get hurt. He's got to improve that command, but he has a knuckle curve. That's a pretty good bender. Very one good knuckle curve. I can see he's one and six. He's kind of gotten off to a pretty slow start in nine start, but, he, but what they see in him is his good live fastball. 25 walks. Aaron Erstad leads it off, 0-1. Well, with Tosic, with that 6.91 ERA, he has bounced around between the pen and the rotation. And he had an elbow injury a couple of years ago, throwing a slider, and therefore went to the knuckle curve. Added that to his repertoire. And now is back throwing the slider as well. One ball and one strike on Darren Erstad. Six-game hitting streak now for the Angels' leadoff hitter, the designated hitter. 54 driven in. Darren in the middle of a six-game hitting streak now. Well, One ball and two strikes. Mario Erstad has just opened up the whole field this year. Last year, he closed it off by trying to pull a lot of pitches that were outside. And that brings a lot of ground balls and little pop-ups. This year, he's got more movement in his feet. He's, he's rocking up there. He's got some good rhythm. Him and Mickey Hatcher has gotten together on some tapes of when he was a college player. And this has helped him. He's using his hands. He sees that ball away. He's going with that pitch and hit it to left. So that's so crucial for an on-base guy like Erstad. Well, he has almost doubled his hits to left field this year. And you talk about watching tape. This guy is in there every day before every game looking at tape of the opposing pitcher. And uh, I think it's helped, and he has told us that it has helped. And it's something that he likes to do, and boy, the numbers don't lie this year. And I asked him about those wristbands, how he's got them pulled all the way up to his elbow. He says it's easier to wipe the sweat. He goes, plus, <laughs> you know, I don't have the weight at the bottom of my hand. Well, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, you know, because Mario, most guys wear the sweatbands down below, you know, right near their wrist, and when that fills up with sweat, it, it's heavy. It weighs them down a little bit. You, you're constantly taking them off and wringing them or getting another pair. So this is a, this is a good idea. Some people might have think that that's to keep the strawberries off of his elbows, but uh, come on, this guy, he loves to get dirty and bloody. So are those officially elbow bands then? They could be. As opposed to wrist bands? Whatever works. Watasek's 2-2 pitch. Gerstad stays alive. Mario, can you notice the good hair I call that movement on that fastball it is starting out middle of, middle of the plate and then ends up you know like a couple inches outside that's good movement there has never been I don't think uh, Rex any thought about the fact that he doesn't have good stuff uh, they have always said that it's just a matter of control and command and I think that can be said for a lot of pitchers obviously but with Tasik without question has the stuff and the Royals excited about his abilities Yet it has not transpired into the numbers this year. The 2-2. Fill it up now on Erstad. This is another thing that Erstad's been doing this year. He's, he's not up there swinging early in the count, only when it calls for. With men in scoring position, you want to be a little more aggressive. But he's been able to see the ball. He's seeing more pitches. Here's a 3-2 count. He's, he's been able to see most of all the pitches that Wachowski has, except he hasn't shown him that big knuckle curve yet. Full count on Darren Erstad. Wotasek not on the same page with his catcher, Greg Zahn, who will take a trip to the mound now. Well, the numbers on Darren Erstad indicate that he's a good bet to make the All-Star team this year. He was an All-Star in 1998. 
And boy, the quick start this season, the 449 average in the month of April, and he really put himself back on the map after admittedly struggling last year offensively. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Erstad is, you know, of course, his average is 362, but what's impressive is the 34 multi-hit games, which leads the American League. Three and two on Darren Erstad. Matasic's pitch. Find a left, the base hit. Just as we spoke about, a base hit to left field. So Erstad goes the other way. Angels are trailing this one two to nothing, and we revisit for those of you that may have missed it in the first inning, two out walk to Beltran, and that set up Jermaine Dye. And he went deep to center field for number 19 on the season. Oh, and that was a pretty swing. Now, Belcher normally is a high fastball pitcher, but he put one down in the zone, and Dye just brushed it. Sometimes you have to credit the hitter. And Jermaine Dye muscling up with a two-run shot. And Orlando Palmero will step in now. Erstad, a threat to run, draws a throw. Tosic has quick feet. He's able to get that ball over there. You can steal off of him, though. He's got a high leg kick. Erstad intently looking at Watasek. 11 steals this year for Darren. Orlando Palmero takes a strike. He just mixed in a little slide step on me right there, though. So he's developed a little slide step to cut down on opponents trying to steal but Paul Merrill he's an ideal guy to hit up there in the order plus he's been hot lately five starts in six games that's a lot for a role player and so she's riding him out one ball and one strike well the Angels have really had uh, sort of rotation in that two spot this year they have had six different number two hitters Paul Merrill one of those yes they're trying to find the order Kennedy early that was a lot of pressure on the young rookie to, to hit second in back of the hottest hitter in baseball and behind hitting in front of Mo Vaughn, Tim Salmon and company, Moss, Anderson there's a lot of power behind there so Socha set him down a couple days let him gather himself as he was uh, sinking down in average wise and that's really helped him, put him in the eighth spot since Erstead battling that sun at first in this inning, it's always a factor in the first inning, difficult to see the pitchers read here, Mario as you can see, Erstead blocking the sun, but what's even tougher, getting the signs from Ron Renicki at third. This is the only inning that the sun plays in the factory. And again, with Tosic back to first base. Because, I mean, that, you know, that sun is just right in your eyes. Now, Brent Strom is going to come out and have a little chat with Watasek. And I tell you, this is probably what he's saying. Young man, there's nobody out in this game. You've got to forget about that runner on first base, keep that ball down, and bring a double play. Well, it happened to Suzuki, it appeared last night, when uh, Adam Kennedy was at first base. He threw and threw and threw. Next thing you know, Erstad homers. Can't let that base runner distract you. Erstad can steal. He's got 11 stolen bases and been caught four times. One ball and two strikes now on Palmero. Erstad was going on that pitch. Well, there is one patch of sun which just creeps over down towards second base and directly in the base runner's view. And so at least in the first couple of innings, as it comes in from left field, uh, it's going to be difficult for not only the uh, runner, but at times the first baseman as well. Back up the middle off the pitcher. The third baseman, Randa, has no play, and Palmero is aboard. So Orlando goes right back to the mound with Tasik. Had to tear him off his body, and the Angels have two aboard now. Palmero, he's a slap hitter, and he hits that ball wherever it hit, hit is thrown. So he goes up the middle. Biggest hole out there goes off his glove. Whenever the ball hits off the pitcher's glove, it's usually a knock because it throws the infielders who are already committed on the ball, and it throws them off. Well, the Angels put together two hits now. Palmero at first base with his infield single. And so he will battle the sun now. And Mo Vaughn will step in for the Angels. Tying runs aboard early. Hit in the air. Deep center. Backing up Beltran. Runners will tag. Catch is made. And Beltran's throw will come into second base. Erstad will move up to third. 
And Darren now just 90 feet away from scoring. Runners at the corners, one away. Bo well, got just underneath that one. Yeah, and he likes to swing early in the count. Especially with men on. He likes to swing at it. He got it. Just missed it. Got the pitch he was looking for. Vaughn is the first out. Because sometimes, Mario, that pitcher will give you that first fastball and hope that you're taken. And that's the best fastball you'll see. That's why Mo Vaughn swings at first pitches a lot. Tim Salmon a shot now. His average has been climbing steadily. One ball to no strikes on the Angels right fielder. Who hit his fifth career grand slam in the opening game in the series two nights ago. And Salmon now with five. Trails only Joe Rudy and Brian Downing. And the all-time grand slam list for the Angels. Rudy had seven, Downing six. Two and oh now the count. Salmon's been using his hands much better. Early in the season, he seems like he fouls off many pitches. He checks swings a lot. And that's just the way he is. It takes him a month or two to really get going. His track record will show you that. He's having a good month of June. On the ground left side, random might be two to second one. The relay is a double play. They turn it five, four, three. And the Angels are done in the first inning. Quick start fizzles. Royals in the lead, two nothing. Jermaine dies two run homer in the first inning. The difference as we go to the second. And Brent Strom, the pitching coach, a veteran of five seasons in the big leagues as a pitcher, talking with Jay Watasek. Joe Randa leads it off. Belcher missing low, 1 0. Sometimes after the first inning, you can overload the pitcher's mind with information. Pitching coach, some, sometimes the, you know, the first in, the pitcher's just trying to find him, gauge his fastball, engage the conditions, the mound, all that stuff. Strom knows. He just is trying to help his young pitcher. Two balls and no strikes on Joe Randa. How much of that is actually technical talk that is going on right now as opposed to psychological talk? Well, it's probably more psychological. Belcher's 2-0. To third, nice play by Gloss. Spins, and he got it with another scoop by Mo at first base. That's his second of the game already. Hands, hands all around the diamond. Watch this beautiful pick here by Gloss. Nice soft hands. You have to have that, or it's a clank. Now he throws it, rushes it a little short, and a tough pick by Mo as the ball bounced right on the grass at the cut of the infield. That's the nastiest pick a first baseman has to pick. Well, you know, one of the things they say about Gloss is that it's incredible with the guy his size to be that nimble as Mark Quinn takes a strike. But he has the ability to go down to the dirt, make some plays, and quickly get to his feet and make that strong throw to first base. That time he did need some help from Moe, but the help was there. One ball, one strike on Quinn. Gloss just has, you know, Superb range at third. He's able to go in the hole with the shortstop normally makes that play, or he goes down that backhand down the line as well as anybody. He's got a good throwing arm. And there is a reason that he'll most likely, barring injury, be attending the All-Star game. Well, you would think you would certainly pencil Erstad into that, and you would hope that Gloss would also be a selection. I mean, how can you not? Gloss is in almost every single offensive category. He's in the top ten of every every category. In the air to left field. Palmero backing up. And there are two outs now. Well, if you're one of the first 30,000 fans through the gates at Edison Field on Saturday, June 24th, to see the Angels battle the Twins, you'll receive an exclusive Angels Cruiser Cup courtesy of Visa. Get your tickets today by calling the Angels Charge Line. At 714-663-9000, the Angels and Twins. Schools out, bring the kids and the Cruiser Cup. To the first 30,000 fans, Greg Zaw on the batter. What's an exciting Angels ball club this year. They've got offense, they've got lots of power, some speed, and good young pitching. Especially tonight, I mean, the Royals and the Angels both are right at the top of the division offensively. They're exciting. Belcher's 
one and one. Well, I'll tell you what, this Royals team may not get a whole lot of publicity as far as being one of the better teams in the league. They're exciting. And you look at the standings, and although the White Sox have really run out to the big lead in the central, this is a quality ball club here. Oh, you can't take anything away from the Royals. They're young and they're on the move, and they just extended that man right there, Tony Muser, to a couple more years to give him some time to work the team that he really has just gotten last year, the nucleus of these players. The standings in the central, Chicago leading the way, Cleveland winning the last two against Chicago to tighten that one up. Two and two on Zahn now. I remember asking Tony Muser the first time the Royals came to town if he thought the gap was starting to tighten up a little bit in the American League Central Division. He felt at that time maybe not. He felt that the Indians probably had the most talent, but boy, you look at the lead for the White Sox now, and he might have to amend that statement. White Sox are leading Cleveland tonight, however, five to nothing. That game is late in the eighth inning, but you're right, Tony Muser has done a terrific job for this ball club, and he seems to be the perfect type manager for this type of young team. He's firm. He's a baseball man. He's been in the game a long time. In the air to center. Erstad started in and recovers to make the catch. Belcher with a 1-2-3 inning in the second. Dye's home run remains the difference. It's 2-0 Kansas City. Leads it off for the Angels. So and won the count. Anderson. Two for eight in the series. Has a grand slam this season. Came against the Royals earlier this year. He ropes one to right. There's a base hit. Jermaine Dye plays it on one hop, and Anderson leads it off with a single. So the Angels get their third hit. And Garrett Anderson trying to raise that average a little bit. He's been a little bit perplexed himself. The power numbers are up, but the average is a little bit down. But slowly but surely, it's starting well, to come around. I'm going to tell you some of the reasons for that. He started the season with a big bat, 36 inches, 36 ounces. The bat, he felt he could handle it and control it. Therefore, he was able to hit more home runs because when you have a big bat like that, the bat is going to carry that ball over the fence. So what, what's he do? He goes into Mike Sosha's office and says, Skip, I got to do something. What do you suggest? I, I know I'm, I can hit for a better average. He said, go to a lighter bat. It might help you. So he did. And he hits a home run in his first or second at bat with the 34-inch, 32-ounce bat. Well, he's a better hitter as well, no doubt. In fact, he is a 300-lifetime hitter. Gloss fouling it back. Troy one for six in the series. And Gloss now with an average of 310. He had a nine-game hitting streak earlier this year in the month of April, and that was when he was off to that red-hot start. And boy, you talk about power. The Angels' home run numbers are up this year, and this is a big reason why Troy Gloss. Gloss is blossoming in only his second full season to a big-time power hitter in the American League. He's got sweet hands at third. Mickey Hatch has been a big help for him, as well as the rest of the Angels this year. Well, the Angels on pace for a club record. Stands at 192 right now. Two balls, two strikes on Gloss. He's in the top ten in batting average, runs, doubles, walks, on-base percentage, slugging percentage total bases you can just go on and on down the sheet all-star numbers that's right here's the 2-2 from Wotasek Wotasek he, he, he just barely came to a stop that last delivery you must stop the rules say or they'll call a box and that is they call it because you're trying to deceive the runner. You've got to come to a complete stop. But the umpires, they don't call the balk as much as they did when they tried to make it an issue. Remember a few years ago? In the air, shallow right field. Jermaine Dye has a beat on this one. And one away as Gloss is retired. So Anderson back to first base. Benji Molina will step in for the Angels now. Gloss says it just missed him. He was swinging. He doesn't get cheated now. This guy, Benji Molina, has probably been 
the most pleasant surprise all year. Would you say, Mario? No doubt about it. You know, going into spring camp, he and Matt Walbeck, of course, were side by side, and I think Mike Sosha wanted to see how it would play out early, and Benji really played well. Four for five career against Tossi. Runner goes. Fouled off, so they had Anderson on the move. Garrett this year has four stolen bases. That was a little first pitch hit and run action. Mike Sosha, he's an aggressive manager. For the Angels, you just never know what he's going to do. We've seen him squeeze. We've seen him try to double steal with two outs. I mean, there's been a lot of things that Mike's done this year that have been surprising but effective. Well, Mol Molina's a good contact hitter, too, so uh, a good guy to have in that situation. The Angels may not have blazing speed, but they have guys that can run the bases very well. Molina hits in the air. Deep left center field. On the move, Damon to the wall. Go on! Benji Molina with his fifth home run of the season. And the Angels have tied it at two. And with that Angels home run, another $125 goes to Miller Brewing Company's Tools for Success program, awarding local technical graduates with the tools they need to join today's workforce. And thank you very much, Benji Molina, number five on the season. <laughs> and it was well struck. It sounded loud all the way up here. Watasek tries to get away with a fastball right down the middle of the plate. And Benji Molina had a nice little spin on that ball. To use his hips. Johnny Damon tried, but no chance. Adam Kennedy takes up five. Well, we said he was a good contact hitter. He made some pretty good contact there. I could say, you could tell that first pitch, he drilled foul. He was on Watasek. And he knew he, he was four for five off Watasek. Kennedy skies it to deep center. Beltran is on the move. He will go to the track to haul this one in. So Kennedy gave it a ride. Two gone now. Angels looking for back-to-back -back home runs, falling just a little bit short. But Benji Molina continues to have such an outstanding year for the Angels. Such a humble player, too. He's always got a smile on his face. Appreciates the fact that he's a big league ball player. He really does, and he says that over and over. And that's why he works so hard. He has respect for the game and the players who came before him, and this is huge. This is a big, this is called the mental attitude, the proper mental attitude of a young player. And the knock on him was he couldn't stay healthy. They wanted to see what he could do. So far, he's taken a beating back there this year. He's had foul tips like every catcher. A couple collisions at home, and he's been able to weather the storm so far. One ball and one strike on Benji Gill, batting in the nine slot tonight for the Angels. He's really perked up in his last 10 games. He went through that really tough stretch and then busted out of it a bit. That stretch of 0 for 24 really dipped his average. He was pressing some. That was in the time that DeSarcina went out with a shoulder injury, and then they were talking about getting Kevin Stalker, and that kind of made him press a little. He's got a long swing anyway, but he's, he's shortened up a little. There's that knuckle curve. That's a very sharp pitch. And we haven't seen a lot of that uh, because they tell us he was throwing it a lot initially when he first learned that pitch and blisters were starting to form on his pitching fingers so he had to back off a little bit. 2-2 Two -two is a wave and a miss. That's it for the Angels here in the second. But Benji Molina with a two-run homer gets the Angels back to a 2-2 Two -two tie. It's home run number five for Benji. We have lift off Houston. 2-2 ball game, and Angels pitching coach Bud Black likes the turnaround he's seen in Tim Belcher. Well, I mean, you know, everything that I heard over the winter time was that his stuff had had gone backwards. Uh, so it was, it was really refreshing to see that his stuff had picked up from last year. You know, talking to Joe Madden and some other people who were here last year that they thought his fastball was much crisper, his breaking ball was much sharper, and his split had more action. Well spoken, Bud Black, first year pitching coach for the Angels, has done a fine job with the young ones and the older ones. Ray Sanchez grounding it foul, no balls and two strikes to lead things off here in the third. 2-2 two -two tie. He was right last Saturday in Baltimore. Tim Belcher had a very mid-season form split finger, man. It's nice. It had 
little bit of fadeaway to it underneath the bat. Sanchez. Ray Sanchez, though, is, is a real player, Mario. On the ground to the right side, Kennedy has it. And one away, Sanchez retired, and let's go to Billy Mack. First of all, Mario, you sound marvelous tonight. It's good to see you here at the ballpark on the TV side of things. You know, with Tim Belcher on the mound, I thought before the game I'd explore the relationship uh, with Mike Sosha, Nikki Hatcher, and Tim Belcher, that 1988 Dodger connection. I asked both Hatcher and Sosha, what about this guy? And they both interestingly said the exact same thing. The ultimate competitor on the mound. Now, they used a little salty language. I think you can uh, read between the lines when they talked about Tim Belter and his attitude going against the batters. But they both said the same thing. You know, Sosha said he used to pop that 95-mile-an-hour fastball in 88. He's much craftier now. But they also talked about his father-figure relationship with the younger pitchers. And one other thing after this pitch I need to tell you. I finally asked Sosha, or rather Hatcher, about Mike Sosha. I said, Mick. How has Mike changed over the last 12 years? He said, well, you know, it's interesting. He's exactly the same guy, but he's 70 pounds heavier. Oh. That's Hatcher <laughs> saying it, not me. Let's go back to you guys. <laughs> All right, Billy Mack, thanks. Well, that's what you get for bringing one of your uh, former teammates with you to the coaching staff. You know, old stories get dug up. <laughs> Johnny Damon, the batter with one out. Boy, they love to really needle each other, don't they? Yes, and that's all part of the game. Baseball is wonderful. It that type of thing and you have to have it 162 game seasons a long grind you've got to have a little humor got Damon on strikes and there are two outs and Belcher who picked up his 1500th strikeout in his last start it's another one here tonight nasty split finger there it is now you see it now you don't Johnny Damon got to go on that one ball hit the ground Molina applied the tag pitch tracks here will show you that was filthy Pitch strikes provided by Questech.com. Strikeout number two on the night for Tim Belcher. He fanned this man here, Jeff Rebele, back in the first inning. 0 and 1. Rebele was very good in the first game as he got three knocks. Last night, he didn't get any. So I walked down there and stuck my head in that locker room after the game. I go, How could you? What happened? You couldn't get any hits? And he goes, I got myself out last night, Hud. Well, that's the perfect explanation. He didn't what, give, he didn't give uh, that left-hander, uh, no. Washburn, any credit at all. Well, you know what? He deserves a lot of that credit, don't you think? Yes. I mean, you talk about an outstanding effort last night from Jared. The 1-1 from Belcher. Rifled toward left. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, Washburn really had it going on. He's a solid left-hander. Look at this guy. You're not a loser. <laughs> no, you're not. But he's got to make that play. Yeah, he was bummed out. Now, Steve took care of him, the ball boy down the line. Steve is good at making people happy down there. One and two on Rebele, who has had a chance to play with the absence of Carlos Fablis, who is on the DL, another one of their fine young players. And Rebele, the veteran who really struggled a bit offensively last year with the Orioles, really having a terrific offensive season this year. Belcher looking for another one, two, three inning since the home run by Die back in the first inning. He'll go with that split finger. Missed it inside. Six in a row he's retired since the Die home run. Tim had an interesting comment on his first start against the Orioles when he was really struggling with the walks early. He said, you know what, there were times I felt like just taking a knee behind the pitching mound, but uh, that's just not the way I operate. And he's falling behind on Rebele now. Three and two. Well, Belcher has great mechanics. A strong lower body. He was a power pitcher for many years in his career. Now he's kind of on the downside, and he's still utilizing that good form that he uses as a power pitcher. But he's relying more on movement and placement. Full count pitch. Lost him. Rebele with a two-out walk. And he will trot to first base. That is the second walk of the game now for and Belcher, who over the years has struggled against some of his former teammates. Belcher 0 for 7 lifetime against the Royals. And Tim did pitch with Kansas City, had three pretty good years with the Royals. And his numbers were very good. In fact, he led the Royals in wins three consecutive years, 96, 97, and 98. Finished with 42 victories in that three-year span. One ball and no strikes to Beltran. 
Walk and a run scored back in the first inning for Beltran. Rebele leaves, and Belcher with a strike, 1-1. One, one. Beltran's a switch batter. He hits the right side, 373, and from the left side, he's hit 243 this year. It's most of his at-bats on the left side, because there's more right-handed pitchers in the game. Belcher's 1-1. One, one. There's an advantage to switch hitting, because all of the breaking pitches from a right-hander will come to you as a left-handed batter, and vice versa from the left hand. So it's easier to hit the ball coming into you than it is going away. The 2-1 pitch now, in the air to center. Erstad started in, backs up now, and hauls it in. And the Royals are done here in the third inning. Nothing comes with a two-out walk. We go to the bottom of the third, 2-2 ball game. All tied at two runs apiece. Bottom half of the third at Edison International Field of Anaheim. And let's check out the Dodge All-Star voting. American League outfielders, Jermaine Dye leads the way, and he has a chance to go back to Atlanta where the game will be played this year. And he's kind of a surprise leader. But what about our guy Erstad, who leads the world in hits? I mean, you know, this is this is a problem I have sometimes. The hey, hey, Erstad just got a vote. He, he they're 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 voting him <laughs> in down here. Keep those votes coming for our guy in left field. 0-1 oh on Darren Erstad. Well, I tell you what, those numbers have to uh, be a little bit higher for Darren. He is certainly better than sixth in the American League. But the fact that he's getting tallies by the second Absolutely. is, is it's amazing. pumping us up. Darren singled his first time up. Line drive to left. It's another multiple hit game, and now it gets by Damon. That ball was played very poorly by Damon. Erstad will hit the bag at second. He'll go to third in safely. Boy, Johnny Damon played that single into a two-base air on top of the base hit. And so Erstad will stand at third to lead things off. Watch out. Erstad's already got some dirt stains on that uniform, but what new? He gets another multi-hit game. Johnny Damon, ah, he planks it. It went under him, and now it's off to the races. Watch Erstad as he tracks second base. Hits the inside part of the base. Watch this head first dive. He got some nice air, Mario, and he's in under it and asking for time, please. And a single E7, and that uniform is dirty again for Darren Erstad. Palmero, 0-1 the count. So now Erstad with the help of Johnny Damon's miss out there in the outfield. It's a third base. Now look at the defense. Tony Muser elects early in the game to keep those guys back. So all Palmero has to do is just hit a ground ball and he'll play Erstad. And with Tassa quickly ahead, 0-2 on Orlando. Seven RBIs this year for Palmero, who is out at left field tonight, and Erstad shifting to center. Palmero has made good use of his starting roles this year. One ball, two strikes. Yes, he has. I, I like him a lot. He's a very valuable player for the team. Palmero could do a lot of things for you. He could play all the outfield spots. He comes in at pinch runs. He doesn't have uh, blazing speed, but he's got adequate speed. And you will normally see the third baseman inside at third every time Palmero is up to respect that speed. <laughs> Palmero is hacking. And most hitters will tell you that they like the fastball the best. But I believe Paul Merrill hits the curveball as good as anybody. Is that right? Oh, yes. He sits on there. It's because he doesn't rush out there to get the ball. He waits for it. He keeps his hands back. And this, even with two strikes, when Tosic has him down in the count, is the perfect opportunity to get an RBI. I mean, it's not easy, but it's almost the easiest way to get one. The one two again. Ward left field, but foul play by Steve down there. He's getting around a little better. He, he, had, little, he had a little knee surgery a few weeks ago. Steve makes a lot of people happy. Every ball he catches, he gives away. It's the way it should be. So Paul Merrill now, he's tough when he gets two strikes on it. Because he chokes up on the bat, and he's just trying to put the ball in play. They're coming inside on it. And he fights it off to right field. Die will not make the play. One hops it. 
Erstad will score, and the Angels have taken a 3-2 lead on the RBI single by Orlando Palmero, his eighth RBI of the year. Palmero doing his job again for his second hit of the night in his mini at bat. Fastball in. You couldn't do it. They tried to look at die. That was sweet. He tried to keep that ball in front of him. That's what he was trying to do. And that's the key. Yes. He, and, he didn't uh, want he didn't want that same thing to happen that happened to his partner, Johnny Damon, and left. Well, he really stretched it out, kept it in front of him, <laughs> and as a result, Palmero is at first a chance for Mo now. One ball and no strikes. Looked like he did a little belly flop out there <laughs> in the outfield. But he made a nice play keeping it in front of him. And he thought he had a chance to catch the ball. So it was a good effort by Dye. Mo Vaughn one for six in the series. Well, the Angels this year 14 and two in Mo Homers. Two and oh now the count on Vaughn. Back in the month of May, Vaughn had a 12-game hitting streak. The home run numbers have dropped off a little bit recently, but Vaughn with 20 this season. Well, I mean, you, it's impossible to stay on the, that, that streak he was on. He was really tearing it up. And that's the way it is in baseball. Peaks and valleys all the time. I mean, you, there's rarely do you stay in the, in the tree. We call it a tree if you're hitting a lot. Rarely do you stay in the tree that long. Well, he had 13 in the month of May, which was the most that he had ever had in one month. So if you project that out over the course of the year to illustrate your point, you're looking at 78, 80 home runs. So it's just not a, it's just not doable. You know, it's, it's too difficult to hit the round ball with the round bat that consistent. The 2-0 pitch. 2-1 is Mo takes a rip. He took a lot off of that pitch there. 2-0, Mo was looking fastball. With Tossic pitching backwards a little bit, and you have to do that now in today's game. With it, you know, it's not like it's three and one fastball time, three and zero oh fastball, two and zero oh fastball. They don't throw those anymore. They used to. Too much offense. Trying to right field and deep. One hop over the wall. It'll be a ground rule double for Vaughn, and they will hold Palmero at third base. So Mo rifles one to right. And the Angels freak with Tosic with three consecutive hits now in the third inning. Bow's on it. Fastball out over. With Tosic is not locating that fastball. He's getting hit around as he one hops it in the stands. Now Jay Watasik has managed to go five innings in each of his last four starts, but he is in danger now as they get some activity. Brett Laxton starting to warm up. In the Kansas City pen. Here's Tim Salmon now. Still nobody out. In the air to center. Not deep at all. Beltran on the move. Makes the catch. Paul Merrill with the tag. They're going to hold him up. And that's the first out of the inning. Well, Ron Renicky is a very aggressive third base coach, but absolutely no chance of sending Paul Merrill there, so they forced the throw. Orlando took a couple of steps off the bag. Renicky held him up. I'll tell you what, Ron Renicky has done an absolutely outstanding job this year for the Angels in the third base coaching box. He is very aggressive, and he says that that all starts with Mike Sosha. That's the way they want to play it. That's right, and that's the way you like it as a fan. You want to see him be able to take the challenge home. Brent Strong's coming out to have a little chat with Potosic. Well, Brent Strom in his first year as the pitching coach with the Kansas City Royals. He has also had some big league experience as a pitching coach over in the National League with the Houston Astros in 1996. And that was under Terry Collins, the former Angels manager. And they were both members of the Astros organization. Former USC Trojan is Brent Strom. He tries to straighten out with Tosic here in the third as Garrett Anderson stands in with two men in scoring position. Angels have taken their first lead of the night. Garrett singled and scored his first time up. One ball and no strikes on Anderson. 18 homers 
He only had, he had, well, he had 21 last year. That was a career high for him. So he ought to surpass that big time. Well, Anderson has had a grand slam against the Royals this year. And uh, also has five home runs total this season against Kansas City. And he leads all of the Angels in that department against Royals pitching. But hey, the rest of the bunch, the pack, Erstad with four, Gloss with three, Salmon three, Bond with three. They, they wear out that Royals pitching. And the Royals pitching staff has given up 120 home runs. That's number one in the league. Uh, and also the major leagues. It's a stat they're not proud of. Latasic's 2 1. On the ground to the right side, a run will score. Rebele will throw out Anderson. Crossing from third is Palmero, and the Angels now have extended the lead 4 2 Anaheim. So give Garrett Anderson his 49th RBI of the season. Nicely done by Garrett with the infield back. Two outs with a man at third base, and Troy Gloss will stand in and high fives and handshakes for Garrett Anderson. Gloss fly to right field his first time. Owen won the count. The Angels started this inning with three consecutive hits. Palmero singling one in, and now Anderson's bounce out drives in another, and Gloss. Trying to pick up an RBI with two away. Latasic missing with a breaking ball low and outside. And this is one area that the Angels at times this year have really excelled in, and that's the two-out hit to drive in a run. Gloss right now zeroing in on 50 RBIs, thanks in part to Mickey Hatcher, who really has worked overtime with Troy. On the ground, back up the middle, off the glove of the pitcher. Rebele throws and gets it. Nice play by Jeff Rebele. And the Angels will settle for two runs, but they take the lead. We go to the fourth inning for two Angels. Safe. Flag trivia question tonight. Benji Molina is trying to become the second Angels catcher ever to hit 300 in a season. Who was the first? Something to ponder. I'll give it to you in the next half inning. The answer that is Benji Molina. Flashes the target for Belcher. 0-1 on Jermaine Dye. And a 4-2 ball game. Angels at one point trailed by two, courtesy of Dye's two-run shot in the first. But since then, Belcher has retired seven of the next eight batters he has faced. No balls and two strikes on Dye now. That's 47 pitches now for Tim Belcher. He's got to like that. That's a good low pitch count there. He's working ahead of the hitter here. 0-2 off Dye. Those runs that his, his angel offense threw up there for him helped him out a lot, Mario. That gave him a little more confidence and go out and try to experiment. Always nice to pitch with a cushion. Missed it inside, one and two. Well, Jermaine Dye, we mentioned, is leading the American League in all-star votes. And he is trying to become the first Royal all-star starter since 1989 when Bo Jackson did it for the Royals. In the air, left center field. Palmero was playing deep. Now Erstad calls him off. One away. Well, you and a guest could win a trip to Dodger Stadium on Saturday, July 15th to see the Angels take on the Dodgers. The prize includes luxury bus transportation, a day in the new Dodgers suite, and an exclusive Angels prize package. Send your name, address, phone, age, and why you are the ultimate Angels fanatic on a piece of paper to the Anaheim Angels and why I'm an Angels fanatic sweepstakes at P.O. Box 2000, Anaheim, California, 92803. And maybe that young man will win. Never know. And look at Belcher giving Mike Sweeney a, a first pitch curveball. Says, take that. You will not sit on my fastball like you have everybody else's. And we have seen Belcher throw the breaking ball a little bit here tonight. Sweeney fly to center against him his first time up. There's another bender. Mm. Two hooks in a row. As Mike Sweeney is a very dangerous hitter as he likes the fastball out over. He too is in a lot of top ten categories or top ten in the different categories like batting average, runs batted in, multiple hit games. 
Set up for the fastball inside, and Belcher just missed it. Mike Sweeney's road batting average is 410. Well, he has 70 RBIs already, and among the hit leaders as well. Erstad way out in front. Two more for 100 hits for Mike Sweeney. The 2 1 pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Another nice play by Steve. He's still a little gimpy on that knee there. Yeah, he's moving kind of slow, but you know what? He still made the play. Got soft hands. He does. Belcher here trying to battle one of the best hitters in the American League. And he's doing it with curveballs and fastballs. He hasn't thrown that split yet. Coming fastball in. And he missed it again. Three and two now on Sweeney out of Ontario High School. Graduated there in 1991. Born in Orange. And when he comes back here, evidently he loves it because his numbers have just been outstanding. 12 for 24 now at Edison Field. Yeah. He's liking it. Now Belcher might use that last fastball to set up a split finger. Shaking off and coming fastball in again. 3-2 pitch. Ooh, hit it. Down goes Sweeney. Just a little bit too far inside. Sweeney will try and shake that one off. He is trying as hard as he can not to show any pain. That's proper. He's a warrior. You never want to let the pitcher know that he hurt you. But it got him in the wrist. Oh, I thought it got him up in the up in the arm. The wrist uh, is, a, is a place that you don't like to get hit. Yeah. Oh, it got him in the knuckles. There's so many bones in the wrist and on the, on the hands that that's a place that hitters don't like to get hit. Least amount of padding. Right. It's all all bone. I thought it got him up on the forearm there as it looked, but no, it hit him in the knuckle. Hopefully Mike's all right. Sweeney stays in the game. He's aboard now at first base. He's used to this. Wow. That's a show of respect, I think. Most in the AL. Nine times he's been flung. 0-1 on Joe Randa. Well, we talk about Sweeney's ability to hit with power and drive in runs but he can steal a base every now and then as well he has five this year he's been caught only once good athlete he's Tony Muser's third catcher how about that luxury in the air shallow right field Kennedy is back and he makes the catch two outs holding it first is Sweeney Randa retired. That'll bring up Mark Quinn now. Quinn just back up to the big leagues uh, hut after being sent down to Omaha. And boy, I'm not sure he liked going down because he's had some good numbers. And he said, you know, I had 72 hours to report and I took all 72 just to clear my head. And then I went down there with a good attitude. Uh, proper. <laughs> good attitude. Got to. Make sure you've got that bad attitude out. That will stay in the way of your performance in anything you do. Man, well, so he took his time. Take your 72 hours. It's, it's not mandatory you go right down the next day. Sometimes you would go down the next day and say, hey, I'm a happy camper. I deserve to be sent out. I'm going down to work. But he had pretty good numbers. And so sometimes that's a little bit of a rebellious move when you, when you wait out the 72. Two balls and no strikes. Kind of use that to send a little message. Well, Tony Muser, I think, sent a message as well, and, and he basically said, look, we want you to work on your outfield play when you're down there, and the numbers offensively were there because when he went to Omaha, he hit 377, and Tony Muser kind of just trying to guide his uh, good young player. And he's back up into the big leagues because, as Tony says, he deserves it. That's right. He's got a real nice swing, and it's pure. Raw power, and you can see Belcher is showing the kids some respect as he's throwing him all curveballs out of the strike zone. Breaking balls away. Don't want any part of it. Two outs. He'll take his chances with Zahn on deck. Belcher's 3-0. Lost him up high. Now this is 
this is not necessarily because Belcher's losing control here. Belcher, I just feel like he, did, he didn't want to pitch to Quinn. Well, especially when you fall behind 2-0. And the next last thing you want to do is make a mistake because Quinn can hit the ball out seven home runs and now he'll just regroup here against Zahn. Zahn is certainly no slouch as he can hit that ball. He's hitting 242 this year. Spray hitter. He's got a couple home runs. Oh, by the way, Hud, he had the worst job in America last year. Backing up Pudge Rodriguez. Oh, for Greg Zahn. That means he's playing maybe, what, 10, 15 games? Not much more than that. I think he had about 20 or so. <laughs> yeah. But you definitely That's have to tough. wait. But Zahn has the proper mental attitude. I know him. He's a friend of mine. And the guy, he's happy to be there. He's trying to accumulate time. When you're a left-handed hitting catcher and you're a good receiver, you can bounce around from many teams and have a nice long career as a backup. He's played with Baltimore, Florida, the Rangers last year, and now Kansas City. And Belcher misses again, 2-0. I mean, former Angel Greg Myers has really done well with that role. Great example. He's been all over. And speaking of all over, Belcher all of a sudden is starting to lose command as he falls behind his second hitter now, 2-0. Well, he had a walk in the first, one in the third, and now one more here in the fourth, so he's had three for the night. This is Got to be a little bit normal, I, you know, not pitching, but this, this is his second inning, I mean, his second start. Got him to pop it up. Benji Gill says, I'll take it. And he does for the final out of the inning, so nothing doing for the Royals. Benji Molina will lead off as we go to the bottom of the fourth. The Angels lead it four to two. Aflac trivia question tonight. Benji Molina is trying to become the second Angels catcher ever to hit 300 in a season. Who is the first to do it? Brian Downing. There you go. 326. Pretty impressive. Big man. Look at him. Look at those pythons. Those forearms. <laughs> he was buff. Brian Downing adorns the 40th anniversary all-time team wall out there. Benji Molina will start things off. Four to two Angels lead after falling behind two nothing. Mario, that's a wall out there that you can see if you'll come out to Edison International Field and check the game out. Absolutely. And some of the brightest names in the history. Baylor, Ragosi, and out. Up the middle, into center field. Molina has a multiple hit game. That's his second of the night, leadoff single. He continues his dominance over with Tossic. Now he's six for seven. I'd say that's dominating. When it starts is when you read the paper in the morning. You wake up as a player, you read the newspaper, you see who's pitching that night, you go, oh, I remember, I got him. So you drive to the ballpark, Mario, and you are feeling good about your chances. Who was that player for you? Who was that opposing pitcher for you when you woke up in the morning? The big unit, Randy oh, Johnson. That's right. Oh. And you had success against him. It was exciting to know that you were going to face the giant. 0-1 oh, on Kennedy. And you knew that he was going to be throwing that ball up there around 98 to 100. So you had to have your sleep. You had to have the proper food <laughs> in you. Take your vitamins that Rest. morning. Oh, believe it. And then just go up and swing hard and hope you make contact. That's about it. Kennedy fly to center his first time up. One ball, one strike. Well, Adam Kennedy, uh -huh. since being dropped uh, down low in the lineup, has really responded. This is a move credited to Mike Sosha. He knows the temperature of these players because he played the game for a long time and was a battler himself. He knows how to work the mental side. The mental psyche of players is very delicate, but a manager knows how to work, pull those strings. Sit him down for not one day, but two days. And says, all right, so he's able to get his confidence and get hungry again to get back out there. And Mike has said, don't get confused with pressure because it's, it's always a pressure-filled situation wherever you hit. As Kennedy drives into the air, left center. Damon with a play. First out of the inning. 
there is just a little bit more responsibility in that two hole and when you drop down to the eighth or ninth hole a few less things to worry about and as a result Kennedy has prospered this is good for him down there now they got Kevin Stocker you know he'll hit that spot Palmero because the Angels don't have a full-time designated hitter Sosha has a lot of options and it's good to have options yes and he's got options in the pitching department as well. That's what's keeping the Angels afloat in this Western Division. Benji Gill fanned his first time up. Plays one down foul. You know, how we talk about Benji Gill and the fact that he came into the season knowing he was going to be a backup after he made the team out of spring training, a backup to Gary DeSarcino. Then Gary goes down. And all of a sudden, your entire mindset switches very quickly. That's got to be a tough uh, adjustment to make. That's right. Now you're saying, ooh, now it's me. And the pressure, there's a lot of pressure to perform out there. Just got caught in the mind game, but he's a good guy to have on that bench. It's on 6 one 0-2 now on Benji Gill. Nice curve ball to Gill. But he's got soft hands, and you can play him at second or short in a pinch. Working him a little bit more at second base to make sure his mechanics and everything and his footwork are, are proper over there. Hill now perhaps will become a little bit more defensive here with a count 0-2. Wasting one away. Some hitters are good at hitting with two strikes. I was because I had two strikes on me all the time. And so what you do is you say, all right, now I can play pepper with him. You just kind of shorten up your swing, might choke up on the bat an inch or two, and you really you tell the pitcher, all right, I got you right where I want you. That's the offensive mind. Now the pitcher's set mindset is, hey, all right, I'm ahead of you. I'm going to make you swing out of the zone because you're aggressive. We'll see what Watasek does right down the middle. Might be two. The second one, Reveille's relays in time, a double play, and the second of the night for the Royals. We have played four. It's 4 2 Angels. Angels are leading the Kansas City Royals with a score of 4 2. And Mario, there's a great thing happening by the Red Cross. They're calling it the freeway series between the Dodgers and the Angels. Boosters clubs are having a blood drive. 1 800 Give Life. And you can, if you participate, you can get a T-shirt and or Dodgers and Angel tickets. So everybody come on out from 10 a.m. to 3.30 Long Beach and help save a life. Sanchez on the ground to Vaughn and one quick out. Sanchez out of there. Well, Angels baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you in part by your local Southern California Mercedes-Benz Retail Center. Test drive and see the new 2000 models today by New York Life, the company you keep, and by Lowe's Home Improvement, Lowe's Improving Home Improvement. Johnny Damon now with one out, Tim Belcher ahead by a couple of runs tonight. Belcher surrendered the two run homer to Jermaine Dye in the first, but since then, nothing doing for the Royals. Damon is 0 for 2. There's that high fastball that Tim Belcher was known for in his career. I faced him quite a few times, and you knew you were going to get a high fastball, and it looked good to hit, but by the time you hit it, it was like a foul ball. You couldn't get the good part of the bat on it. Belcher's 1-1. But since he's gotten up there in age, and this happens to every pitcher that, get, that gets on with age, you lose a little bit of velocity. So when you throw that pitch up there, they can get the bat on the ball and drive it. So Belcher's learning that split finger, learn how to locate the fastball down the zone a lot more effectively. Goes back uh, to making adjustments. That's what all pitching coaches say. It's what longevity is tied into. Shallow left center. And Benji Gill able to make the play. Two gone now. So Belcher continues to cruise along here as we play in the fifth. Tim's last start. Lasted five and a third against the Orioles, and he allowed five hits and only one run. Tonight, he has given up just one hit and a pair of runs. The home run by Dye, that's the difference. Jeff Reveille 0 for 1 with a walk. a 
a strike called on Rebele. Nice to get the over curve. Rebele is over one tonight with a walk. Back this way. No balls and two strikes on Rebele, who was born in Dayton, Ohio, still lives in Dayton, Ohio. And he attended Triton Junior College. The Royals have a very explosive offense, and Belcher's holding them down so far to just one hit. That's a good point. These are two of the top three offenses in the league, statistically. The Angels came in second in the American League, hitting 288. Kansas City third at 283. The Royals lead, I should say, the Rangers rather, lead the way at 290. Here's the one two now to Rebele. Popped him up. Troy Gloss says, I will take it. He does, and a one two three inning for Tim Belcher. Nothing doing for the Royals. Erstan will lead off. It's 4 2 Angels. Homer to give the Royals the lead. Benji Molina answers with a two run shot. And in the third, an error by Johnny Damon on the Erstad hit leads to a couple of runs. And the Angels up by a pair as Erstad starts things off. And a breaking ball strike, 0 1. Tossing starts Erstad off with a nice curveball. Knuckle curve. Erstad with a pair of singles. 35 multiple hit games now. Back up the middle into center. It's a three-hit game for Darren Erstad. Lead-off man is on again for the Angels. And they have done that now in each of the first five innings. Three times by Erstad. He, he is zone. He is in the zone. That's when you're unconscious up there and you hit everything for base hit. We call that being in a tree as a ball player. You'll see a guy and you go, hey, when are you going to fall out of the tree, man? You're just, you're going way too good. Eventually, guys fall out, but they climb right back up in it. Well, not too soon for Erstad. Here's a bunt by Paul Merrill. Randa bare hands, and a nice play by Joe Randa. To advance the runner to second as Erstad moves up. But a nice sacrifice bunt by Paul Merrill, who almost turned it into a knock. Look at that. Good. He gives, him, gives himself up late like that. He hides the, the disguises it. Ran a nice bare hand do or die play. This is a good concentration play here at third base. And he looks at ball. He looks down and never takes his eye off it. That's how he's able to bare hand it. He had a great example of what you want out of the two slide on the lineup in Paul Merrill. Coming through there with a sacrifice. Randa makes a great play to at least get one out. And Erstad standing at second. Boy, Orlando has really turned into a fine role player for this ball club, and he really accepts that role and knows what he needs to do to be successful. Well, I like Paul Merrill a lot. So do the Angels. There's probably several other teams out there that would like to have him as well, especially in the National League where they use pinch hitters every night because the pitchers hit in the National League. We'll check out the defense for move on here with out with Erstad at second. Pretty much straight up, a little bit of pull, but hey, how about this guy out here in shallow right? He's the rover, Rebele. 0-1 oh on Mo. again the breaking ball. The reason he plays so far back there is Mo doesn't run very well, but it gives Rebele all kinds of range to try to glove that ball and throw out Mo. Rebele played shortstop a lot, so he's got strong enough arm to hit Sweeney. Tosic starting off first pitch breaking ball. Bluffs a throw to second, and that was after Mo slammed a fastball on the inner half for a double his last time up. Tosic giving up two runs in the second, two in the third. Angels looking for more here in the fifth. Tosic's 0-1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Well, Darren Erstad, whether he's at the plate or is on the base path, is constant movements. And uh, at the plate, just basically a timing mechanism, but I think the same on the on the bases. But what, look at look at Joe Rand is sitting. He's way back at third base over here. He's way back. Erstad, he could steal third with one out here. 
But I think with Mo Vaughn hitting, he's a little bit uh, saying, hey, Mo can really, he could knock us both in. Well, you take a chance. But you have to know 100% in your mind that you can steal third base. But with one out, this is a, a good situation to steal if you're going to try it. And with Randa way off the base over there at third, he can almost beat Randa to the back. So does it surprise you that they play this defensive alignment with somebody on base? Well, not really because it's Mo Vaughn hitting. And they know that Erstad probably won't take a chance here. Well, Tassik's 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. Knuckle curve was biting on that one. Tony Muser took over the club at the All-Star break in 1997 for the Royals. He was the hitting coach for the Chicago Cubs at the time and replaced Bob Boone. And he is hoping Batasa can keep this one close here. The 2-2 to Vaughn got him swinging. Again, the breaking pitch. And Batasa comes up with a big strikeout. This is good pitching. He's burying that, that knuckle curve down the ground there. He had Mo Pool. Pitch track will show you that was way down low. Pitch tracks provided by Questech.com. Meeting on the mound now. Greg Zahn out to talk to Wittasek and chat about how they want to pitch to Tim Salmon here with two away and a man in scoring position. And uh, one of those areas also where a lot of times a pitcher will get a big out, strikes out Mo Vaughn, and then has a bit of a let up with the next guy, and Salmon can hurt you if that happens. Oh, he's had a lot of support hit behind Mo Vaughn. That's helped Mo. And with Anderson hit behind Salmon, that's helped Salmon. Because the stronger the hitter behind you is, the more the pitcher's going to want to throw to you as the hitter. He doesn't want to walk you or put you on base. He wants you to hit your way. I want to face the strong hitter behind you. In other words, Salmon protects Vaughn. Anderson protects Salmon. Gloss protects Anderson. And down the line. Ooh, man. Song had quick hands on that one. That might have crossed him up a little bit. And a cross-up is called, and that's what they call when the catcher gives the sign to the pitcher, and the pitcher throws a different pitch than the sign he put down. The 2-0. Two balls and one strike on Salmon now. Tim started the year two for 28 with runners in scoring position, but has really picked up the pace since then. And Salmon with an opportunity now to drive in another run. He is 10 for 30 since starting the season that slowly with men in scoring position. Two balls and two strikes on Salmon now. Well, Tim Salmon continues to be one of those guys that gets off to a slow start and has had the ability to pour it on, and that's why he's not been able to play in an All-Star game, which if you look at the end of the year and tally up his numbers, you say, how in the world could that happen? And now, seven years in the major leagues. I certainly had the numbers at the end of the year to be worthy of an all-star, but you have to get off to a, a blazing start. That's the trick. Yeah. Last year, he did that. And then he had that nasty injury to his wrist. And that kept him out a couple months. Well, he is second in career home runs by active players who have never been to an all-star game. And... The uh, leader is Eric Karros with more career home runs. Salmon has 212. Swing and a miss. He got him. So with Tasik pitches out of the jam here in the fifth with his third strikeout. We go to the sixth inning. It's 4-2 Angels. Angels lead at 4-2 to tonight. We go to the top of the sixth inning at Edison International Field. The Miller upcoming schedule for the Anaheim Angels. The Minnesota Twins coming to town tomorrow through Monday. And then Seattle Tuesday through next Thursday. Followed by the Oakland Athletics. And some key games coming up for the Angels tomorrow. Seth Etherton will throw for the Angels. He beat the Orioles and Scott Erickson in Baltimore his last start. Which is no easy feat. Oh, impressive. 
then they have a chance to battle their own division with Seattle and Oakland. And that's the key point there is Beltran takes up high. The Angels are going to need all the support they can get, so come on out. Get you some tickets for those series. Oakland entering play with the two-game lead over Seattle, five and a half up on the Angels, and Texas eight games back, and boy, they struggled. Beltran 0 for 1 with a walk. Pops up the bunt foul. We've seen our division, the West, and I think Seattle has the best starting pitching. Their, their middle relief and their relievers a little bit shaky, but I'll tell you, Kent Bottenfield coming back, that's big. They'll have him and Tim Belcher, two veteran leaders on that staff. Dixon is not far behind. Popped him up. Shallow right field. Kennedy is there and one away, so Beltran is retired. Jermaine Dye, the batter now. Well, since that two-run homer by Jermaine Dye in the first inning, Belcher had a walk in the third, a walk and a hit batter in the fourth, and nothing else. And this is just so indicative of his last start, the same type of start that he had against the Orioles when he struggled a little bit early, didn't give up any runs early, but just really settled into a groove and really battled, and it's the same story here tonight. 0-1 on Jermaine Dye. Socia's very happy with the pitchers who have filled in during the absence of Kenny Hill, Tim Belcher, Jason Dixon. You can see Brian Cooper. Kevin Stocker's got the night off down there, giving young Jared Washburn a little bit of advice. Or they could be talking about anything. Who knows? 0-2 on die now. Well, Brian Cooper, I'm sure, is absorbing some things tonight. And Mike Sosha said one of the things that, that Tim Belcher brings to the table, not just his ability to pitch on the mound, but to show guys like Cooper and guys like Washburn and Seth Etherton that you can throw a pitch and get beaten by that pitch, but that doesn't mean you're intimidated and never throw it again or be afraid to throw it again. Lifted in the air to center. Erstad has range and makes the play. Two outs. And those are things that young pitchers need to absorb. And, uh, you know, those are the priceless things that you don't see on. Now you've got to have the skills to pitch in the major leagues. Cooper certainly has those pitching skills with four great pitches. The biggest thing they can learn from Tim Belcher is that game competitiveness of Belcher. He is a, a, a vicious competitor. And he has, he contains his emotions. If he gets hit around or hit a home run off him, you rarely see an emotion out of him. And this is something that can be learned by the young guys. Mike Sweeney now with two outs. No balls in one strike. Well, remember Rex back in spring training when everybody said the Roy or the Angels rather had no pitching and that was going to be the downfall and they had no depth. Well, now look what happens. You get the injuries to Belcher, to Hill, to Bottenfield. Who steps in for Mike Sosha and Bud Black? The youngsters up from AAA and they have provided the depth. Not only the depth, but a, a glimpse into the future, I think. Mind to third and caught there by Gloss. What a play by Troy. And another 1 2 3 inning for Tim Belcher. So the right hander gets a little help from his friends. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 4 2 Angels. What a play by Gloss. Nice play by the glove. Angels in the lead tonight, 4-2, to two, as we go to the bottom of the sixth and premiering Wednesday. It's the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report. It's 30 minutes of nightly sports news, completely de dedicated to L.A.'s home teams for extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews. Catch the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report, Southern California edition, nightly beginning Wednesday and only on Fox Sports Net. Garrett Anderson leads it off for the Angels. Anaheim in the lead, 4-2, to two, and... Tim Belcher has been a huge key tonight for the Angels. Just his second start of the year after coming back from surgery and following up a very good outing in Baltimore with another good one here tonight. Anderson with a hit and an RBI. Back toward the second baseman. Revelé with the off-balance throw. One away. Well, what Tosic has settled down a little bit and he's using that curveball a lot. Slider. Look at, look at Tim Belcher and Bud Black talking about the tendencies of one of the hitters. Well, let's 
lot of experience between both of those guys. And Belcher, after that two-run homer by Dye in the first inning, has really slammed the door. Well, having Belcher is like having an extra coach. Pretty much. One ball to no strikes on Gloss. Another point, too, is while Tim Belcher has been out this for two and a half months, he, the times he's been with the ball club, he's been in that dugout, working the minds of these young players. He's done his part. He's pulled out his pom-poms and rooted for the guys. It's really difficult when you have an injury and you can't be a part of the team. Even though you're a part of the team, you don't feel like it because you're not out there helping them. But look what he's done. He's up one hit tonight. Line to left, and Gloss has a base hit. Angels get a one-out single. Back in the second inning, Benji Molina with the Angels down by a couple of runs. Was able to tie it up with one swing of the bat and Anderson aboard. Mm. Sounded loud. Fifth home run of the season for Benji. It's been all Angels since. And he has really come in with some great numbers against the Royals this year. This has just been one stamp that Molina has loved hitting against, a 472 average. Let's see if he can continue his hot night. Latasic. High chop to short. Sanchez only one play for the second out of the inning. Runner will advance to second now as Gloss moves up. And Adam Kennedy will hit. You know, Hud, we're talking about Tim Belcher. One of the things he told us the other day was one of the biggest thrills he gets right now is when a young pitcher comes up to him and asks him for advice. It's almost as thrilling as getting a guy like Albert Bell in the double play the other night. He just loves when somebody asks for some help. And uh, he's certainly willing to give it. That's the smartest thing a young player could do. Find a veteran player around you and talk to him. Pick his brain. I did it when I was a young player. And even when I was an old player, I would go up to a Red Shandies, who was my coach in St. Louis. He's a Hall of Fame second baseman. Pick his brain and say, hey, Red, what did you do back in the day in this situation? And what was it like? And this is how you learn by asking questions. Some guys are a little shy. They might be intimidated by a, a big star veteran. Well, and that's what Jared Washburn said earlier this year. It's, it's good to have a lot of young guys on the team because sometimes it's not that easy to go to one of the veterans. One ball, one strike on Kennedy. You, you would much rather talk to a guy that has as much experience as you. And Washburn said sometimes it's easier to go to a Brian Cooper or Seth Etherton and talk about certain experiences. But Tim Belcher, meanwhile, on the flip side, says, I love it when those guys come to me. One and one on Kennedy. On the ground, back up the middle. Sanchez for the out. That's all for the Angels in the sixth. We will go to the seventh inning. Angels in the lead, four to two. Angels lead it four to two as we go to the seventh inning and HUD the story tonight. You've got to start with Tim Belcher. He's just been outstanding for the second consecutive start now. He's dealing, but we got to start about you up here in the booth with me. He's pumping me up. It's I'm just the B team tonight. I listen to you on the radio, Mario, and you keep me informed. You're Way the one. Go. No, you're the man. <laughs> and actually, Belcher's the man. That's a great cheetah time, by the way. Thank you. As Tim Belcher delivers to Joe Randa, one ball and no strikes. Only one hit allowed tonight by Tim Belcher through six innings. Randa is 0 for 2. And there is hit number 2 on the night for the Royals. Lead off single in the 7th. Randa was looking for the first pitch fastball and he got it. Well, this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Anaheim Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Anaheim Angels. Mark Quinn will step in now. Angels have out hit the opposition tonight, 10 to 2. Quinn has a walk to his credit. Now Benji Molina trots out to the mound. There is activity in the Angels' pen. Mark Pitkaizik. You can't ask more from Tim Belcher than he's given him tonight. 
he's been dealing. Only gave up his second hit. Now, Bud Black and Mike Sosier are talking about it. Joe Madden checks his chart out as he's the bench coach, and he makes up those charts. That's both lineups. You can see the colors. He has the, the, uh, the numbers that are circled there are who made the last out. So they always have an idea. Now, Bud Black all down and talk to Bobby Ramos. Ramos answers the phone like everybody does four or five times a day at their house. Hello? <laughs> Mark Quinn waits. And lines it foul. <laughs> My little boy, he's three. Does he answer it? Yeah, boy, he's, he's hello. He's got it down now. It's beautiful. Cade is my boy's name, and I'm proud of it. Well, Tim Belcher, 83 pitches now. He has gone 0-2 six times on the night and really has kept the Royals hitters off balance. One ball, one strike. I might get in trouble if I don't mention my daughter Alyssa. Well, yeah, now you've got to get equal time. She's sweet, too. You let her answer the phone? Husband the residence. <laughs> one and one on Mark Quinn. Belcher kind of trying to get Quinn to roll over to double play here. Instead, it's a line drive to right center field. Randa will head to third. This one goes to the warning track. They're going to hold Randa at third base and a two-base hit for Mark Quinn. And so the Royals, like they have a tendency to do, will come back on you. And they did it in the opening game in the series. Now they have the tying runs in scoring position, courtesy of that double by Mark Quinn. Sweet stroke as Belcher's now. He's missing with that fastball right out over the middle of the plate, and Quinn just leaned on him. Third base coach Richie Dower, with nobody out, he probably could have sent the runner home, but he decided he would wait with nobody out. Mike Sosha is going to take that stroll out, talk to Tim Belcher, see if he leaves him in or brings him out. Now, Tim Belcher has to be disappointed here, but he has pitched a whale of a ball game, allowed just one hit through six, and now the two hits here will force the departure of Tim Belcher as his former battery mate, Mike Sosha, takes him out of the ball game. So the Angels go to the bullpen. Mark Petkaisek will check into the game. Great job by Belcher tonight. It's 4-2 Angels. The two-run Angels lead in the seventh inning with the Royals. Coming back here a little bit now. Randa single, Quinn a double chasing Tim Belcher. And his number is outstanding on the night. The two runners on the base is still his responsibility, but 85 pitches in his second start of the year. And you know what? He is extremely upset about having to come out of this game. Uh, he wanted to finish it off here, but Mike Sosha has Mark Petkaisek in the pen and certainly has to pull him out here. Oh, you've got to play for the long haul. I mean, it's just late June. There's plenty of baseball to play this summer, and they've got to have Tim Belcher, especially by the way he's pitched the last two outings. Mark Petkaisek coming back from a uh, viral syndrome that kept him out. And he was placed on the 15-day disabled list on May 17th, but he's a key member of this bullpen because of his ability to get ground balls and double plays. Ah, he's sweet. He's got a good fastball slider changeup. His changeup is one of the best changeups in the business. Well, this is the 26th time now in the last 27 games that the Angels' starting pitcher has gone at least five innings. And I guess these days, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, and, but, you know, the way pitching's been, middle relievers are now a commodity. Right. You've got to have good, solid middle guys to hold your lead until it gets to the closer. This is just the way the, the, the pitching game has evolved over the last several years. Angels will give up a run here for an out. You can see that defense. They're playing him a little bit of shade to pull in center. Shade the other way. On the ground is short. Muffed by Gill stays with it and gets him at first base. A run will score as the Angels trade the out for Joe Randa scoring. And Benji Gill had a little bit of trouble with it but stayed with the ball and Randa comes in. He has a good job by staying with it. He just planked it, then kicked it, and then stayed with it. And he's got a good throwing arm, and he's able to just get Zahn, who's hustling down the line. Took his head up, didn't watch it, then he kicked it, but he stayed with it. You don't have much room for error at shortstop or third base. And it helped a bit that the catcher was running. Now Sosha will pull the infielders in. 
trying to cut down that run at home. That is the tying run at third base. Sanchez popped him up. This is not going to do the job. Kennedy with a play. So Petkaisic with a big out there. And now the infield will be allowed to move back here with two gone as Sanchez unable to drive in the tying run. Well, he's disappointed by that at bat for sure. He was looking to hit a sacrifice fly, but this guy saved so many runs with his glove on defense, no one's going to say a word to him. And that's what Rich Dower, their third base coach, was saying. This guy has played as well at short as just about anybody in the league. But he wasn't able to drive in the run offensively. So Tim Belcher still with a one-run edge here. Johnny Damon, the batter, with a man at third base. That's Quinn. And Pet Kaisek misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Johnny Damon, tough hitter in this situation because he's such a slap hitter, contact guy. He can hit it wherever it's pitched. This time on the ground, a second. Kennedy to get the out. Nice job by Mark Pet Kaisek. Well, the score is the Angels four, the Royals three. And now for a look at what's ahead in the National Sports Report after the game, let's go to the Fox Network Center. Four to three Angels as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning, and the Anaheim Angels will take on the Minnesota Twins beginning Friday, June 23rd through Monday, June 26th. Get your tickets now by visiting the Edison Field box office, all Southern California Ticketmaster locations, or phone 714-663-9000. Benji Gill takes it up high to start things off in the seventh. It is a one-run game, but how about the job by Mark Petkaisic with two in scoring position and nobody out. This is why he's so valuable. They missed him while he was out with that viral infection. He's very solid. He's a veteran guy. He knows that he doesn't have to overpower guys. He's going to trick them. He's going to finesse them. That's what he's done. And, you know, he missed. What did he miss? Two weeks? More than that. I mean, he was out for quite a while. In his first appearance in Baltimore, he looked like he was in midseason four. On the ground to the right side, Rebele with an easy play. Gill is out, one gone. Well, Darren Erstad has been a big part of the Angels' offense tonight. Three of the ten hits that the Angels have. In the first inning, Erstad going to left field. We talk about him using all parts of the field in the third inning. And again, he goes the other way. And his last at bat in the fifth inning. Back up the middle. It's a three-hit game. 35 multiple hit games now. Tops in the big leagues. And the Angels coming into play here in the seventh have at least one hit in each inning against Watasek. So Watasek is going mostly with that knuckle curve. Started out the beginning of the game with his fastball. Used that a majority of the time, and he's getting hit around a little bit. He's not control of that curveball as he gets another one over. Well, Jay Watasek, after giving up a pair in the third, has been helped out by a couple of double plays tonight. But he has really settled down. Had a couple of strikeouts in the fifth inning. Gave up a single no damage in the sixth. One ball and two strikes on Erstad now. Angels fell behind early. Benji Molina tied it up with a two-run homer. And then Erstad started that rally in the third with a base hit that turned into a two-base error by the left fielder, Johnny Damon. It put Erstad at third base, and then he eventually scored on Palmero's single. With Tassix 1-2. Down the middle of strike. Two he gone. Got Erstad guessing right there. He, he thought he was going to throw him a breaking pitch there, and Erstad just froze Erstad. This is a good pitch by Watasek. He just surprised him right down the middle with some 90 action. You see it, 93 miles an hour. Just frozen. Got to credit Watasek for that nice pitch. Well, Watasek has given up 10 hits on the night, but he has been able somehow to avoid major trouble. Oh, Merrill lets go of the bat. Oh, watch out. Down into the first row right behind the Royals dugout. And Paul Merrill now will head back to see if the fan is all right and to see if the bat is available. Well, what about our cameraman down there? That ball went right in that pit. Paul Merrill just lets that bat go, and Dave Bushner almost gets it. 
cameraman down there. Incoming, Dave. Palmero has his bat. Trying to get something going here with two outs and seven. And no souvenir for Dave Bushner. Doug Freeman, the producer, has him working right now. <laughs> He's focused on bringing the action to him. Now the ground is short. Sanchez almost automatic. And the Angels will go one, two, three for the first time in this ballgame tonight. So we go to the eighth. The Angels four and the Royals three. Four to three, the Angels lead it as we go to the eighth. Our Jack in the Box game summary for the ballgame tonight. Tim Belcher, the big story for the Angels. Six solid innings, allowing three earned runs, only three hits in that span. Aaron Erstad, a three-hit game. Molina has homered, and Jermaine Dye with a two-run first-inning home run for the Kansas City Royals. Angels lead it four to three. And Jeff Revelay will start things off now. And the eighth inning for Kansas City. Pet Kaisek missing down low, 1-0. But Kaisik's the right man for this situation to come in here. He'll try to get through this eighth inning as best as he can, and then hand it over to Troy Person. Two balls and no strikes, and Troy right back out there last night after the rocky outing in the first game of the series, and that's the way you've got to do it. Oh, he's your closer. You live or die with him. And by the way, he's second in the league in saves. Oh, by the way, that's right, 18. Hello. You know, I've never seen a closer go through a year without giving up saves. Well, you know, and it's just like hitters aren't perfect. Hitters will strike out, but that's oftentimes not talked about a lot. And uh, closers, because a lot of times, and obviously most of the times, the game is on the line. But 18 for 23 in save situations for Troy Percival. 2-1 to Rebele. 2-2 two two now. Well, the Angels in another tight one tonight, and 21 of the Angels' last 25 wins have been decided by three runs or less, and that really goes to show that the bullpen is a key, key part of the ball club. Mitch Reinhardt's a great graphics guy. <laughs> told me that Pet Kaisek missed exactly a month. I thought it was a couple of weeks. It turned out being a month he was gone. And that, that, and that had a trickle-down effect to the rest of the bullpen, too. Look at that souvenir. Not just young people enjoy those souvenirs. Look at those more mature folks enjoying that ball from a big league game. She's redheaded, too. She deserves a souvenir. Absolutely. Huh, that'll be you, won't it? Uh -huh. Always come to ball games. Ooh, I like baseball. I love baseball. Especially here at Edison International Field. On the ground is short, running scoop by Gill, who completes the out with a throw to first base. Rebele is out of there. That's a nice play by Benji. One gone of the eighth inning. Gill bobbled his chance before that, but stayed with it to get the out. And this time, a nice running play. Carlos Beltran will bat now. Beltran 0 for 2 with a walk. Kaisek missing high in a way. Beltran started the season in the three slot, which is where the Royals want to have him bat. Then he struggled. They put him down to the five hole in the lineup. He flip flopped with Mike Sweeney. And now, because Beltran is starting to hit a little bit better, they put him back up in the three hole. Ground ball right side. Nice play by Mo. Hits Pet Kaisek on the run for the out. Two gone. Mo's showing some range out there. He's. Made a couple errors on plays like this in the past, but what he does here is he gets a good base under him before he throws the first base. Watch him, he stops and he gets a good base, and a good throw to Pet Kaiser. It's hard to make that play off balance on one on one leg. Look at Mo. Gets a good foundation and a nice target. And a nice play all the way around. Pet Kaiser and Vaughn teaming up. Two outs now for Jermaine Dye. His home run back in the first inning was his 19th of the year. 0-1. There's that filthy changeup of Pet Kaisek's. Well, we talk about Pet Kaisek and his ability to get ground balls. He came out on the seventh inning. 
Two ground ball outs in the seventh, two more here in the eighth. So four of the five men he's faced have gone down on ground outs. Don't have to throw 90 miles an hour to be effective. The 0-1, one ball, one strike. That's why there's such an emphasis put on veteran pitchers. They are smart. They've been around. They know how to locate pitches, keep it down the zone. These are all the keys of successful pitching. Got to be careful with Dye, who is extremely powerful. On the ground again, this time to third. Gloss will back up on it. And the throw is in time, and another pick by Mo Ball. And what a play by Mo. One, two, three inning for Mark Petkaizik. A little help from Mo Vaughn on that play. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Mo leads it off. It's 4-3 Angel. Four to three Angels lead it as we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Troy Gloss flashing some leather tonight. Made a pretty good play. A tricky play to close out the last half inning. Difficult. Now he's a chopper. So you'd want to read it. His first instinct is to charge it. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Watch him from his heels. From his heels, he transfers and makes a nice play to Mo. Mo picked it again as Mo has had several digs tonight. And Mo leads it off. Bowen won the count in the eighth inning, and Jay Witasik is still out there for Kansas City. One of his finer outings of the year, despite the fact he's given up ten hits. Been impressive how he's settled down here in the middle innings. No balls and two strikes. You know, Rex, they were talking about perhaps making Batasic a closer at one point last year because he had the great stuff and maybe ran out of gas in the fourth and fifth innings and they wanted to kind of harness that into a one inning situation but uh, it didn't quite work out the way they wanted it to but he has that type of stuff. Yes he does. Jeez. No walk. 97 pitches is the longest outing of the year and no walks. He's got to be most proud of that. No walk. Zero. He's had some control problems. He's dealing. He's using, using a good knuckle curve. Change up. Fastball in there on Mo. Vaughn has one of the ten Angels hits tonight. A double back in the second. One for three for Mo tonight. Angels looking for another run or two here to make it a little easier in the ninth inning. Two and two on Vaughn now. Tassik's 2-2 pitch. Got the inside corner. He throws Vaughn for the out. One away. And Watasik has showed no sign of let up. Angels baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you in part by General Motors, makers of Buick, by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Did you know athletes can lose more than half a gallon of sweat per hour? Gatorade, is it in you? And by Jack in the Box, where we won't make it till you order it. Fine ball game tonight. The Angels lead it by a run. Mario and Pemba in for Steve Fiziak tonight, along with Rex Hudler. Got the B team in here with the HUD tonight. But... Don't kid yourself. You are a major leaguer. They, they tried to lay that on me as a utility player my whole <laughs> career. They, they say, I hate B teamer. I said, what? I'm a big leaguer, and so are you, Mario. It's good working with you. B teamer with 10 years in the big leagues is what you were, right? Well, I'll take it. Tim Jim Salmon, 0 for 3. He's not a B teamer, though. Ooh. One ball, one strike. I like the I like the term super sub. There you go. Much more appealing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or jack of all trades, master of none. There you go. That's really polishing it up there, Hud. Well, I've learned over the years. I've had to <laughs> give myself some confidence because there's times I'd go seven, eight, nine, ten days in a row without playing, uh, sniffing the field. And you so had, you need to keep building that confidence You have to find ways to pump yourself up. Stay confident. Don't pout, because you'll never get anywhere. The one-two to Salmon. Mm. Wotasek stayed away there and almost nipped the corner. But Wotasek has been impressive because he's able to keep up his velocity. Everything's pretty much over 90, and he's hitting the corners with it. He throws Mo Vaughn before Salmon. Three and two now on Salmon. Garrett Anderson will bat next. Angels have not scored since the two-run third inning. Anderson awaiting his turn. Full count pitch. In the air. Left center field, Beltran makes the play. 
two away in the Angels eight. Well, you really have to tip your cap to both starters tonight. Tim Belcher going six plus, three hits, three runs. But Jay Watasek gave up two quick ones in the second, two more in the third, and nothing since. And it's been a very well-pitched ball game tonight on both sides. Anderson won for three, singled and scored back in the second, also picked up an RBI in the third. He has 49 driven in now, so he zeroes in on 50. In the last few games that we've watched the Angels play, then pitching duels. It's kind of nice to see low-scoring games that are that have some good pitching involved. It's good defense. You've got to have that. Right back to the mound. Nice play by Watson. He'll have another one, two, three inning, his second straight. Nothing doing for the Angels. We go to the ninth inning. It's four, three Angels. Four to three Angels as we go to the ninth inning and coming up immediately after the game, the National Sports Report featuring news, opinions, and highlights from a fresh perspective. Tonight after the game, Yankees and Red Sox. Indians battling the White Sox again and yet another Mike Tyson controversy. So tune in immediately after the game to the National Sports Report. Four to three Angels and Mark Petkaisic will try and put this one in the win column for the Angels. But Kaisik has been outstanding, retiring six straight since coming out in the seventh. He is guarding a one-run lead, and the first man to face him is Mike Sweeney. It's a good move by Mike Sosha here to just leave Pet Kaisik in. He's been dealing. First, he's pitched two days in a row. Give him a little break. But Kaisik has three career saves to his credit. And his last one was nearly a year ago, June 24th, last year at Seattle. His only save of the season, Mike Sosha, sends him out to try and pick up his first this year. The 1 0 to Sweeney. Well, this is the perfect situation for Sosha to leave Pet Kaiser again. He has he is just held those Kansas City Royals down and has given Percy a little bit of time to recover physically, you know, from pitching two days in a row, and more importantly, mentally. The 1-1 pitch now. On the ground again. Troy Gloss. One away. And yet another ground ball out for Pet Kaiser. He has retired seven straight, six via the ground ball. And you know his game is on, and that sinker is sinking when you get that many ground balls. Good sink to that fastball and that changeup also has some downward movement. That brings some ground balls as well. Joe Randa now with one out. Singleton scored his last time up. Kept it up, 1-0 on Randa, who last season for the Royals had 197 hits. Mm. He's had some pretty good success against Petkaisic in his career. But a much unheralded player is Randa. One ball and one strike. Tough to get noticed at third base because unless you hit 40 home runs, 30 home runs, I mean, it's, you know, it's difficult. But Randa does a lot of little things well. Not going to be up in that 30, 40 home run category. But. It's slowly to Gloss. On the move for the out. Two gone. So Petkaiser continues to get the Royals to beat the ball into the ground, and it's going to be up to Mark Quinn. This is as good as we've seen Petkaisic look all season long. He is. He kept himself in the best shape he could. That viral infection had really got him down. He was he was in bed for two weeks with that thing, and then he, he had to get his strength back. He he was, you know, dehydrated. It was a, a really unfortunate injury for Petkaisic and the Angels. Now well, Mark Quinn stands in. One ball and no strikes. Seven of the outs, ground balls for Pet Kaiser, and his ninth out would look mighty good here. Mark Quinn, that would put it in the win column for the Angels. He doubled his last time. On the ground is short, could do it. Gill, and the Angels will win it. Anaheim will take two of three, and pitching and defense tonight for the Angels. Ten hits on the board. They will win it four to three, and the Angels take two of three from Kansas City. 
Our Gatorade player of the game, Tim Belcher. Six strong innings, three hits, three runs in just his second start of the season. And some outstanding work out of the pen as well for Mark Petkaisek. And Mike Sosha extremely happy with the job that his Angels have done in this series after dropping the first two games. They come back to win, or the first game, I should say, they come back to win the last two, and Minnesota coming to town next. Angels win it tonight, four to three. So for Rex Hudler, I'm Mario and Pemba saying so long from Edison Field. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night as the Angels host the Minnesota Twins. Coverage begins at 6.30. You've been watching Anaheim Angels coverage on Fox Sports Net. Now we take you to the Fox Network Center for the National Sports Report.